Good afternoon everybody and welcome to sunny Lithgow and boy is it today currently 27 degrees uh, Celsius yesterday we were 10 degrees hotter anyway just in the garage we got fear of the Velox Black Betty the Humber Super Snipe Reg the Model T and look there's a space and I've got friends that reckon that uh, it must have been time for a new pair of socks because if I've got a space in the garage it gets filled and guess what there it is Clementine 1954 Rover P490 we'll do a little walk around again <laughs> sorry having a bit of a laugh because I thought I'd already started this and I'd gone through all of this to find all I'd done is taken a single photograph so yeah so I'll just show you a quick walk around at the moment she's had blinkers fitted and up the top there still has the semaphores but they're actually disconnected unlike uh, in Vera where they still work these these aren't doing anything but that'll be a job for later anyway so I picked this car up about three weeks ago in fact I think it's three weeks on Wednesday this coming Wednesday uh, it's currently Sunday and uh, up in Maitland which is about four hours north of us um, north of my place in uh, New South Wales and uh, then drove it home via Bialong which is involves Nice little hairpin bends and climbs, but she went well. But the dealer was absolutely amazed. Yeah, I should say, see, I got my glamorous assistant, John, there. John drove me up to, uh, up to Maitland and then followed me home. Anyway, the dealer was amazed that we were going to drive this back and kept saying, you're going to drive this home? I said, yep. Told him which way. And he said, you do realise it's nearly 70 years old? I said, yeah, well, so am I, and I'm still driving it. Uh, and it came back beautifully, actually. A couple of little issues, but nothing that stopped us. A couple of... Stereo, the gearbox was a bit sloppy, but that was in the gear change which I fixed. So, 5490. So, they started in 4849 with the Rover 75, which was the only model at that stage available. Uh, six cylinder like this one, but uh, 2.1 litres. This is two point, uh, nearly 2.3, 2.2 litres. Um, 2.6, sorry, God help us, 2.6 litres, uh, the 90. Anyway, uh, the early ones, whilst they had basically the same front, there were a few differences, the main one being the grill, which had horizontal bars and a light right in the centre of the grill, so it was nicknamed the Cyclops. It also had, down here, air intakes both sides down here, which they then removed for this update because... Apart from anything else, uh, all the fumes from the car in front tended to be absorbed. And they went to this scuttle type one here, which is currently open. It's air conditioning's on in this weather. But apart from that, it's still got this early front. The 54s also gained the park lights on top here. And these became purely blinkers uh, on the early ones, actually. I think they became a white reflector. But on these ones, they were... They were blinkers, or on mine they're blinkers. I've got yellow globes in those, so they show yellow. Not a requirement, but I've got them. Um, and the back is still the early style back, again with a slight update. So it's the lower style with the horizontal lights. Blinkers have been added, but the early cars had different boot handle, a boot handle up here, uh, different reverse lights, and they didn't have, there's a little locker underneath the bumper bar where the spare wheel goes, they didn't have that. Show you in here now. What they did, the spare wheel sat. Ah, we do have some water. Ingress, I just washed it, so it's interesting to see where water's come in. Um, so um, the spare wheel just sat in here, which took up a fair bit of room. So this, uh, this model obviously doesn't, and it's underneath. There's a little locking tab here to open that door. It's all locked. So when your boot's locked, everything's locked. Um, and also the fuel filler which is there also has a little locking lever I've just got my other hand in here finding it because it's been a while since I've done these got to find the thing oh there it is and you then got your fuel filler and again when the boots locked and the levers down it's all locked and there it is got it so it's now locked and we'll go I'll show you under the bonnet soon but the other good thing with interesting thing with these cars is of course they've got suicide rear doors and front door it's all fine until you've got a front seat passenger and a rear seat passenger and they try to get in or out at the same time you sort of get run into each other just here but apart from that it's fine the other anomaly with the 54 model only is this side handbrake 
the earlier cars and later cars had what they called a shepherd's crook coming up here with a grab handle. Early cars didn't have a grab handle, then they got one. A uh, little handle bent back so that you could hold it. Uh, the early one was just a straight up tube with a button on top. But uh, so this one only lasted for one season. And the main reason is that when you shut the door, if I go down, you can't actually see the handbrake. And it's a bit tricky to get. You've got to squeeze your arms through. But apart from that, it's fine. This thing has beautiful upholstery. It's all been reupholstered at some stage. Recarpeted. The carpet's currently out at the front because I've had to work down on the steering linkage, which is right in under there. And I've still got a rubber boot to come and fit, so uh, it's on its way. When it arrives, I'll fit the boot and then I'll uh, be able to put the carpet back in. So got these El Cheapo mats today from uh, Super Cheap Auto and uh, they'll do for the moment. So I've got a dashboard, steering wheel, take my hat off to get in here. <laughs> So what have we got in here to show you? So you've got this, the gearbox, so, or gear change, which is quite a long wand, um, quite commonly called a pot stir, a porridge stir, all sorts of little names. The early ones, the Cyclopses, were a column shift, four speed column shift with synchro only on third and fourth. When they went to these ones, they got synchro on second, third and fourth, straight cut gear first, and it's got a lovely wine. Um, the early cars also had rectangular instruments which didn't go down very well so uh, they in they went to the round ones and then these instruments other than a minor update for the final uh, season of cars the 110 had uh, round they all had round but the 110s gained the three liters uh, three and a half liters uh, Rover V8's um, instrument so we got wipers two-speed wiper on and off oil level gauge so this is an interesting one when you turn the ignition on, but without the engine running, when you push that in, the fuel gauge shows the amount of oil in your sump, so you don't have to dip it. And it's pretty, pretty accurate. Panel light switch, um, common for English cars of this era. Uh, the panel lights are separate. You can turn them on or off or brighten them. Uh, ooh, and the horn works. <laughs> it helps when you don't lean on it. Uh, you've got ignition warning light. Uh, sorry, ignition warning light. Choke warning light, so if you've got the choke out and the car gets to heat, uh, it'll go glow. That's your oil pressure warning light. This is your main and reserve changeover switch. Dubious as to whether it works, so I'm not touching it. And you've got your little um, high beam warning light. The later cars, whilst this has, as I showed you, blinkers, it worked on semaphores originally. For some reason, semaphores never had a warning light. Uh, the Vauxhall didn't either. Um, the later ones, when they went to blinkers, uh, proper blinkers without the semaphores, this got moved over just slightly there, and the similar uh, light was fitted there, green for the uh, blinker warning light. I don't have any warning light. I've only got the click of the blinker can. Not very loud, so we've just bought a little LED one, which I'll you know hang under here somewhere unobtrusively. You've got your blinkers, and they are self-cancelling, and then you've got this little switch here. So what up the top is your lamp switch. When you turn it on and the, that switch is up, you've only got your parking lights. When you click it down, you've got your headlights as well. And then you've got the ubiquitous uh, pedal over the side there, the chrome one, which is your uh, high beam. So apart from that, it's very similar. You've got your air conditioning controls. Yes, uh, heater and fresh air fan and choke and then this is the interesting one this round one that is the freewheel now those of you who ride uh, push bikes and are used to push bikes you know that when you stop pedaling the bike still goes but your pedal's stationary so when you've got that freewheel engaged the moment you lift your foot off the accelerator you disengage the drive uh, until you then put your foot on the accelerator again which re-engages it so uh, around town you can do clutchless gear changes uh, it's designed uh, for highway use to say get it up to speed, back off, let it coast for a while till it slows down a bit, get it back up to speed again. The biggest issue with that is you don't have any engine braking on descending hills. Um, and consequently, these cars are four wheel drum. The later ones from 1960 had front discs. These were never fitted with power boosters because they were concerned that if you were coasting down a hill with your foot on the brake, and the power booster failed, you would suddenly find it very difficult to brake. 
Um, so these were never fitted with power brakes. But I can tell you now, this thing has no power brakes, but it has twin leading shoes in the front drums and they are very light. Uh, compared to Vera, who has a leading and trailing shoe, she, you know, you've got her brakes. Um, and I describe them as foot powered brakes. Uh, so is this car, but by God, they're light so much so that when I first picked it up, I kept looking and even John and I were both looking for a power booster. We thought somebody had fitted one, uh, but no, there isn't one. On, just on these doors, one of the reasons they're suicide doors is because Rover actually bought a Studebaker of the 40s and modelled it, the Rover P4, on those. And in fact, the first of them was a, a Rover P4 chassis with the Studebaker body on it. And I believe within the workshop or within the, uh, the works, it was known as a, um, a Rover Baker. So that's why. And even that that central pass lamp, uh, Cyclops pass lamp, was sort of based on, you know, if you remember that, they, they used one in the Muppet movie um, that had that centre light feature in the, right in the middle of the grill. So that's where some of their design inspiration came from, these ones. John, could you just pull that uh, bonnet release for us? Um, okay, may as well, if I've got a glamorous assistant, may as well use him. <laughs> exactly where you think it should be. <laughs> Hang on. That's up. I'm doing this one-handed, so just bear with me for a second, because uh, it's a two-handed job. <sighs> Brings me up to a couple of other things I can explain. The first thing is, oh, it didn't, it didn't. I've just given it a bath, but uh, black paint can go and watermark so careful. So up bad. here, we have this little guy. Now that's affectionately known within the uh, Rover Works as George, a Viking, because they were Rovers. Anyway. Uh, so here we have the engine. We have a six cylinder engine. Now it's an inlet over exhaust, I-O-E. So overhead inlet and side exhaust, very long stroke, um, typical of English cars. It's, it's interesting to compare the, my three English cars now, and I will in a second and talk about that. But so this one, long stroke, thin bore, 73 point something millimeter bore and I think 105 millimeter stroke, if I remember my figures correctly. Just like Model T almost. Pretty much. So quite long stroke, so of course develops its peak power at something like 13, 1400 RPM. Uh, and I was demonstrating it, we drove out for lunch earlier uh, in it, and you know, you can, it'll go around corners in fourth gear. You can take off in second. Uh, it just doesn't worry it. I, I like first gear, as I mentioned earlier, because um, it's got that beautiful straight cut wine. Anyway, and of course, being a proper English car, it has a crank handle. However, we have an issue with that. Uh, somebody has moved my bumper bar slightly and the crank hole here does not line up with the one behind it. We need to move it over slightly. Um, what else can we show you on here? I'm trying to think, to, oh yes, so talking about engines, my dogs are just going off in the house. I don't know why. I know what it'll be because one wants to get past and the other one's blocking the way. So, um, so we've got three engines, three six-cylinder engines. We've got the 53 Vauxhall Velox. We've got the 54 Rover. And then we've got the 66 Humber Super Snipe. All three engines, totally different. So the Vauxhall is a very modern engine. It's almost square, it's overhead valve, and that's about where the sophistication ends. And now we've got a Greyhound going on a little spaz attack. <laughs> um, the, this, as I said, is inlet over exhaust with very long stroke. And then we switch around and we get Betty. Now Betty's bonnet's up so I can show you hers. Um, this thing is the most modern of them. It's a square engine. It's um, hemispherical, um, cross-flow, twin carburetors. This is the newest engine. All, well, Vera is 2.2 litres, this is three, and the Rover's 2.6, but this is, certainly the Humber's the most powerful of them because it, it just, it breathes better, it's newer. But apart from that, I don't care because they all go wonderfully. And, uh, and they're all beautiful and they're all different. Um, Vera's column shift three speed. This is a four speed manual and uh, Betty is uh, automatic. So I've got one for every occasion. What else can I show you on here? 
trying to think, trying to think. I think that probably might do it. I'll, I'll think of a hundred things after I sign off, but I think that might do it for the moment. Quick little introduction to Clementine. Now, if you're wondering where that came from, 54, Winston Churchill, Prime Minister Clementine, his wife. Uh, oh, of course, you see the, we've got the ashtray sitting there. Um, it's a very handy uh, place to hang my uh, door closer. And then just in case, you've got another one in the back so the kids can smoke too. Uh, just here. Oops, there it is. And, oh, I don't think that's ever been used. Anyway, this has seat belts fitted. Um, they were fitted when I got them. They're just a, they're a, a static belt, but they're a modern belt. They're, they're fine. They work quite well, so they're fine. As I said, the carpet's out till I get that boot and then I'll put the carpet back in. Uh, you can probably just make out the oil filler on top of the gearbox and there's a dipstick next to it. Now the carpet should actually have a flap to lift over, but whoever made the carpet's done a beautiful job, looks fantastic, but no flap. So, a bit of a bugger. Apart from that, uh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, she's fully registered and will probably stay that way. I was going, oh, that's one thing I was going to say. So again, this, I just looked at the bonnet and it reminded me. Um, another thing with these cars, made just after the Second World War, uh, things were still extremely tight and rationed in the UK. So cars were exported where possible. By this model, by 54, I think the greater pro, uh, part of the production stayed in England, but the earlier ones didn't. But one of the things that was rationed severely was steel. But of course, after the Second World War with the aircraft industry, something that was readily available was aluminium. And yes, for my American friends, I say aluminium. And the reason is, nobody ever seems to explain this. We spell it differently to you guys. We've got an extra I, that's why it's aluminium. You miss that second I, so you're aluminum. So that's the reason. Anyway, so Burma Bright aluminium was available. So, bonnet. All four doors, boot lid, all aluminium, except for the very last of the Rover 100s in 63, I think it was, that got steel panels. Uh, made them slightly heavier, but not much. You know, the, the aluminium doesn't save a great deal. It was just purely from availability. So that'll do for the moment. So from Clementine, glamorous assistant John, me, Oh, Ash, who's gone back into standard greyhound mode of, oh dear, I've tied because I just walked five paces. And Edsel, who's gone inside somewhere, I'll say goodbye. Until next time, see ya.